It's Tim Albright with AV Nation with an AV Nation special chatting with my buddy Andrew Evans from Extron. Welcome, sir. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. So we're going to start. The, actually, today we're going to talk about NAV, right? Uh, NAV, uh, Extron's AV over IP solution. First and foremost, congratulations. You guys not won not one, but two awards. Uh, one for AV over IP, but, but also for uh, you know audio and video distribution. That's right. Yeah, we were really excited to, to get both of those awards this year. You know, the... The NAV series has really been fantastic uh, as an AV over IP platform, but to also be recognized as a video distribution platform as well uh, and coming away with some some great honors from you guys, uh, seeing it as something that really takes off in not just the AV over IP space, but also in some of those more traditional applications. Well, and, and talk for a second about it. The one thing about the awards is, is I have nothing to do with it, right? I, I, I say that somewhat tongue in cheek, I, I, I put, I, I crunch numbers, right. Which is never my strong suit, but it, it's, it's our readers, right. It's our listeners. It's the, it's the audience. Talk for a second about what that means for your customers to come up and say, Hey, th this is a really great product. It should win. We certainly have video distribution products with, you know, XTP, DTP, Fox systems yep. that would qualify as a, uh, as a video distribution system. And those are still, deployed widely across all kinds of applications and, uh, and venues. So for customers to, uh, to go and say that NAV really is a product that they're very interested in, a platform that they're interested in, and to, uh, to get behind us and support us with that, you know, it really was pretty awesome to see, uh, to see that, you know, AV over IP, certainly it's been, you know, the buzzword for, years right 10 years plus at least right i mean if you really want to go way back there were products doing like what mpeg one transport stuff oh, yeah. 20 years ago and it was yeah. challenging on a good day uh so so yeah to really see things kind of come around on av over ip and with the nav performance being able to deliver you know, pristine video over a, a packet switch network uh, i really think that we're starting to see the industry really grab on to av over ip all right. Uh, you guys are talking about um, a, a brand new uh, encoder that's been released, the NAV E121. What is it and, and what makes this one kind of special and unique? This past uh, January, we were really excited to bring this one out. Uh, previously, we had a, a handful of encoders and decoders, uh, really great performing products. The 121, though, really sets itself apart, uh, partly because of its size. Uh, we were able to keep the same great uh, Pure 3 codec and intelligent selective streaming support uh, in that product. So our, our firmwares are cross-compatible uh, from this latest introduction with the entire series. But we got it down basically half the size of our previous encoders, which makes it more flexible for where you install it. Uh, cuts down on the power consumption, cuts down on the thermal dissipation, you know, all those things that you want to reduce when you start deploying these in, in space constrained environments and try to tuck them into different places. One of the other things it has, is it has something you guys call a, a power priority feature. What is that? With some of the other NAV products, uh, you can either choose between a local power supply or the PoE functionality. Okay. And so when you've got PoE connected, it's gonna take priority and it's looking to get the power for the device uh, from the network switch. And works great, cuts down the number of things you have to integrate. You can, uh, you can manage power all through a central place at your, at your switch. But what we were finding is that some people wanted to have uh, a level of redundancy to the powering their endpoints. And so what we did is took advantage of coming out with a new encoder, and we now give the installers, integrators, customers the option to choose whether they have a local power supply take priority or the PoE power take priority. So you can now have both of them connected simultaneously, and if you choose PoE priority, that's where it's going to look for for powering up the device. If that PoE drops off for some reason, then you've got your local power supply. And conversely, if you wanted to prioritize local power, you certainly could. So this is really um, redundancy when it comes to the power supply, really, and, and your ability to say, okay, this one's, this one's number one, but if this one drops off, then immediately go to number two. Yep, exactly right. Uh, I want to hit on something that you about the, the the E21. Also, you said is it's half the size of some of your other NAV products. Why is that increasingly important when it comes to not just higher ed, but also corporate spaces? The trend really has been uh, for quite a while that the credenza of of equipment 
kind of has disappeared, right? Yep. People aren't putting the racks in the rooms anymore, as or at least as much as they used to. Uh, if they are, it's very minimal space being allocated to the AV hardware. And so to be able to have the power of an encoder in a space where you don't have dedicated equipment areas really becomes uh, appealing. The other side of it is because it's a quarter rack wide, one inch tall product, we can now get four of them on a single rack shelf. So okay. even in a, uh, a rack installation, you do get a lot better density uh, than with some of the other versions of NAV. All right, Andrew, one last question um, about the E21. You, you talked about the, the, the power consumption savings. There are corporates, corporations and higher education places all over the world that are worried about ESG, right? Environmental sustainability and, and governance. One of the areas that they're looking to save and to be more ESG in compliance is their power consumption of their devices. Talk about, you know, the, that requirement and, and why uh, E21 fits that. Sure. So the Navi 121, uh, it is a much smaller physical package, but it does consume uh, a fair bit less power than the Navi 101 or the Navi 501 in comparison. So not only are you getting the benefit of smaller form factor, less power consumption, less thermal dissipation within your space that you have to overcome with HVAC uh, loading calculations, uh, but we also even have a lower price point on it. So you get, yeah. You know, Smaller, same high performance, but at a lower price point. So you get, you know, initial CapEx savings, but you're also going to experience some OpEx savings as well between the power and the thermal. Very cool. You guys are also talking about a new NAV release. Uh, a couple things coming down the pipeline there. You've got updates to Pure 3, uh, in, in addition to uh, updates to the Pure 3 codec, uh, confidence preview, as well as a commissioning report. Let's start with, with the Pure 3 codec. What, what updates are we talking about? Our engineering team really spent a lot of time and effort with Pure 3 uh, leading up to this release. And so Pure 3 codec is something that's been in-house for, uh, for really a number of years. And we've taken it and updated it and extended its capabilities a few times in the past. But this one was really significant in that we were able to, uh, to develop some extra uh, error concealment and some encoding improvements so that the Pure 3 codec really excels when you start placing it onto converged networks. We've had deployments in the past where we were running on a converged network. In other words, there was corporate traffic, uh, higher ed, whatever the, the entity might be that was using that IP infrastructure that NAV was also using. We had a lot of success with that, but this latest release now takes that up a notch and so what you'll experience now is greater efficiency over the uplinks between multiple switches. You'll see an improvement in the robustness of the reliability of the video. And so when you start having other things using up that pipeline, voice over IP, file transfers, uh, email, web traffic, whatever it might be, uh, you have to have a little bit extra uh, headroom there in order for AV over IP to function. And so what we've done is we've made sure that we're using our portion of that pipe as efficiently as possible. And with the Pure 3 codec, what you're going to see is that you have steady, pristine video, no line errors, no dropouts, no flashing of images uh, like you would if you had a, a different codec implementation. You and I have actually talked about this both online and offline uh, about NAV being on converged networks. I want to pull that on that thread a little bit and, and talk about that and the fact that, that Extron developed this, this technology. And so you're able to take the information back from being on those converged networks for, for a number of years, mm -hmm. take the information you're learning on those converged networks. How, how are you taking that information back and then doing updates like you just talked about about you know upgrading and updating nav in general to be a better network citizen one of the things that happens with nav deployments uh, particularly at the early stages of the system when we introduced it is that we have a network technology support group and that was a is a team of uh, network engineers They've got their CCIEs, that kind of thing. And so they come from the, the IT industry and they have been really instrumental in deploying a lot of these NAV solutions with our customers, interfacing with the IT heads and making sure that they feel comfortable with these AV products being placed onto their networks. 
And as a result of that, we've gotten a lot of really great feedback from the IT side of the conversations where the NAV product gets scanned in a, in a lab or a test environment. Uh, they see how our bandwidth utilization is substantially lower than a lot of the other solutions that are out there. And as a result of that, plus the intelligent selective streaming functionality that's part of Pure 3, we really are able to to live on these converged networks in a way that uh, keeps it from having to stand up a separate standalone IP network uh, for dedicated video and audio traffic. And so obviously there's some benefits to that, right? You know, the, the IT department's not having to spend extra money for a separate network. You're not having to pull new cables. You're not having to to pay licensing fees to your, uh, to your infrastructure vendor to keep all of your switches up to date. And so there's a lot of economies that are, are, that are able to be leveraged when deploying AV over IP, particularly NAV, onto these converged networks. And so it's been really exciting to see how something that was, uh, you know, in the early days of AV over IP, people were, you know, totally hands off. They were kind of scared to put it on their, on their networks, right? And so they stood up totally parallel networks. Yeah. And I think that attitude is really starting to shift and that, that NAV with Pier 3 really is leading the charge when it comes to AV over IP on converged networks. Well, and one of the things is, it actually gets us into another feature of, of, of the new the NAV is, um, the ability to, first of all, have a confidence preview, like wherever you are, as long as you're on the network, right? What that does is that expands, you know, the, the IT department's help desk to be able to troubleshoot, to, to, to bring up, you know, exactly what's happening in that room. Again, you, but you have to kind of be on the same network. So without that, that actually adds a little bit more functionality. Talk about the ability to remotely support and remotely troubleshoot systems that are on a NAV network. The Navigator, which is our system manager for the whole AV over IP system, uh, it's going to give you this single pane of glass overview. It'll show you all of your encoders, all of your decoders. Uh, it shows you any kind of uh, error messages that might pop up because your query or fell offline for some reason. Uh, yeah, it's, it's basically the heart and brains of the, the management of your AV over IP system. And so with this latest release, we also now have, a, we call it confidence preview. And from that navigator, you're going to see a window and be able to, uh, on your web page to see the video that's coming from that encoder. And from a help desk perspective, that's phenomenal, really. Uh, imagine having to manage you know, 50, 100 classrooms across a campus where you've got hundreds of these endpoints and you get the phone call from the professor that says they don't see anything on their screen. Well, if you log into your navigator and you can see your preview from that encoder and there's no video on that, it's a lot easier to talk that professor through making sure that they've got their laptop connected properly to the encoder itself than diving all the way down the rabbit hole of, you know, is my switch configured properly? Did the decoder fall offline? Is the projector, the flat panel display turned on? You know, it, it really speeds up troubleshooting all without having to, you know, hop in the truck or the golf cart and drive somewhere across campus. That saves a lot of time. It, it also, it, and it's been too many years, so I, I, it, the, the figure is out of my brain right now, but it costs X number of dollars per, per class hour that that class is down or that instructor is down. So what you're doing is you're not only saving the time, but you're also saving, in, in this instance, the university money because it, in two or three minutes you you can help a, an instructor remotely, right? You're right without getting in a, in a golf cart, and save the class time that they you know in, in you know back when I was a tech manager twenty years ago, we would have had to you know sneaker net, net it over and verify all the things um, and make sure everything was plugged in. And sometimes you, you can't get there right away, and so yeah, a classroom gets canceled, and that costs the college and the university money. Absolutely. That's right. I mean, you got some of these institutions that if you can't get class going in 10 or 15 minutes, it's canceled. Yep. And depending on, like you said, how long it takes you to get over there, you know, that, that sneaker net might have just resulted in a canceled class of 50 or 100 students in a lecture theater. Uh, a couple of new options that you guys have got. One of these is, is uh, expanded workstation options. Explain that for a second, because you've got three or four options now that you're adding to, to the NAV interface. 
That's right. So in our previous release, we had uh, KVM workstations as an option. And so what this would allow you to do is to associate some of the encoders together uh, and decoders together. And you're basically doing like a KVM type uh, AV over IP application where you might be at your desk with, you know, two monitors, four monitors, and you're moving your mouse from, you know, workstation to workstation so that you can uh, maybe go from a production PC to maybe your local PC, uh, some shared resources, whatever it might be. Uh, command and control type applications is probably what uh, most people would associate uh, with this, uh, not as much with education. And so uh, from that first release, we started to get feedback from customers that were very excited about it, but they wanted some additional features. And so we went back to engineering and gave them the requirements and they were able to crank it out. And now we support up to eight displays within that workstation group. And we support up to 30 different presets, making it easier to recall uh, the different work groups that are uh, configured. And then probably the other part related to KVM that uh, we start talking about eight different displays, right? Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I've got a couple monitors here on my desk and sometimes the mouse gets lost. Yes. And so now, you know, take that up to eight displays, trying to find your mouse, particularly if it might even be on different computers. And so what we do now is uh, we have a way to highlight uh, a border around the display to show where the USB is actively routed. So you know which display your keyboard and mouse are associated to. That is actually pretty awesome. Um, I might want that at, at, the, at the home office at least. I might know a guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys, uh, you guys have, have, have long been in, um, invested in AES, right? And, and you guys have got a new AES 67 capabilities. What are you guys doing with, with AES 67 with this new release? So with the nav system, uh, we've got nav audio, which allows us to uh, encode and decode the audio as part of just the nav stream. It's a yep. uh, separate, separately routable stream, easy to switch, you know, just like the video. You can do audio breakaway, really easy stuff. Uh, previously, you had to choose between whether you're doing nav audio or AES67 audio. Uh, so with the, this new platform, uh, release for firmware, we've expanded the functionality. So now we can do ingress and egress of AES 67 uh, on encoders and decoders. So that gives you these really nice, you know, on ramps and off ramps for AES 67 in a nav system so that you can integrate that with like the DMP plus series of DSP processors, or if you've got a third party DSP, you know, certainly AES 67 gives you that interoperability. Uh, to tie those different platforms together. Very cool. So it, basically you're able to take it in and out of, of the nav system wherever wherever it is. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, you guys have got something kind of cool here, uh, again, as, as a former tech manager that I would appreciate or would have appreciated it. Uh, and that's a commissioning report, right? So you, you've got an integrator, integrator comes in, they deploy a, a nav system, and they're able to generate this report to give to their client. What is on that and why is that important? I'll probably show my age a little bit here, but uh, at one point there was a commercial on television which had some polite old ladies that said, show me the beef. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so prior to the commissioning report, we didn't really have a good way to show you how each encoder was set up. Uh, we didn't have a good way to show you the configuration on the navigator itself. You could do backups uh, so that you had a, a system snapshot and you could restore from that easily if you needed to. But the documentation side was a little bit challenging. And so when you're doing your red lines for your clients and you give them their full drawing package of here's how your system was installed, one of the components that was previously missing was a way to show them how their nav system was deployed. And so what this commissioning report allows us to do is log into the navigator you launch that commissioning report and it takes a system level snapshot of all of the encoders, decoders, and navigator settings and creates that into uh, one comprehensive document that you can then you know, save or print out uh, if you need to have a hard copy uh, for that end user. And now they've got a way to say, here's exactly how my system was deployed, here's how it was commissioned, I know it was working, and we've seen it be used uh, in the past where 
on these converged networks particularly, you might have an IT administrator who goes and they, say, they make some changes to some routing rules, or they might change some addressing schemes, yep. and the AV guy gets kind of left out of that loop. Now things don't work the way they did, but you've got this documentation that you can go back to uh, to your your colleague there in IT and say, hey, this is how it was set up, you know, check it out. Can we get back to this or can we make some changes to accommodate it? Yeah. So it, it's a really great way to uh, to have that system documented without having to go in and you know write it all out, take screenshots, whatever it might be. Well, in today's documentation, I mean, again, you and I are both talking about our age. You know, when when I first started in the business, it was, you know, it was a it was a five inch three ring binder that had everything, including you know all the manuals, all of the you know this that and the other. Today's documentation is done. You know, some sort of zip drive. You know, and, and it gets sent to you know the end user, the IT manager. But that's still important for this uh, system. I think it's actually even more important because you're right. You can take a snapshot and say this is how it was configured when it was working. You know, regardless of what any changes that the, somebody makes to the network down the ro- down the road, this was you know, this is the date and this is the snapshot that it was working. Yep, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, so in that you know thumb drive of documentation, you can give them the PDF of their commissioning report, as well as the backup file for the entire system, and so that way they've got not only the documentation but a way to restore back to a known functional point. All right, Andrew. Again, uh, congratulations to you and the entire NAV team on uh, on the two Aviation Awards. Uh, if somebody wants to find out more about Extron or about NAV, how do they do that? We appreciate that. Uh, we're really excited for those awards, certainly, and uh, we look forward to, to seeing what the future holds for NAV. For anybody who wants some more information on it, just check out the website at www.extron.com forward slash NAV, and you'll get all the latest information. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, for us, for Aviation, go by our website, avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv. You'll find this program and a host of others on there, including, like, like uh, Andrew said, the Aviation Awards. You can check out uh, Extron. That wasn't the only awards they won, by the way. Um, you can check, check all that out and more at avnation.tv. It's avnation.tv. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. This is AV Nation.